So we have Jeremiah Stafford here, and uh, he is a graduate of our um, coding boot camp that we just started in Stanford at a Stanford campus. And our coding boot camp is a partnership between um, UConn Engineering Professional Education and Trilogy. Um, so thank you so much for uh, for doing this Q and A. Yeah, of course. Um, so the first question I had is, um, can you sort of take us through uh, your decision making on why you decided to do this um, and how you heard about this coding boot camp? Sure. Um... So I had been working in the startup world for about two years up until this, to the point where I started inquiring with UConn about uh, the upcoming class. Uh, and I'll take this back to, this must have been around May or June of 2019. And um, part of the work I had been doing in the startup world, uh, there was a fair amount of coding to help analyze certain aspects of the business, but most of it, all of it was self-taught. and. As I explored, you know, investing rounds with uh, stakeholders and trying to get these companies to the next level, a lot of the feedback was, uh, you know, show us the website, show us the data analytics, you know, show us a lot of the things that skill sets that would take me probably two, three years to learn on my own had I just, you know, sat there and ground it out, which is kind of what I was doing up until that point. So I started looking into all the various uh, ways to kind of become more fluent in the language of the web and back end, basically. Um, to be quite honest, I don't know the route with which I connected with UConn. Um, it was a UConn connection. And we started the dialogue and, and started talking about the syllabus and uh, costs and upfront. Uh, and then probably early June, I made the decision that this is probably the best thing for me and started to put things in motion to get the funds available and, and register for the class. So you talked about sort of um, self-teaching yourself a lot of this stuff um, uh, over the past few years, but wh what's your background in, uh, uh, you know, what did you get your undergraduate degree in? And, you know, did you start your career sort of in IT or any of this coding stuff, or is this sort of brand new to you? This is brand new. Uh, in the strict definition of it. Um, so I'm class of 1996, Boston College, with a finance uh, uh, major, Bachelor of Science. Um, and I worked on Wall Street for 22 plus years um, on various sides of the business, always involved in you know, spreadsheet modeling and visual basic kind of rudimentary, you know, entry level type stuff, uh, but never you know, in depth. Um, so I would call myself up into the point you know, very computer literate. Um, and so there wasn't really a block as you might find with, you know, people of my generation of yeah. uh, engaging the web or uh, programming. Um, so in, uh, oof, I guess, you know, post, post the big heavy regulatory environment, my business or the businesses that I was involved in uh, took a dramatic hit and the ability to, um, I guess move within the job world and change jobs and find new jobs. The the, the you know the um, effervescence, if you will, of the finance job market had kind of lost its uh, froth, and so I was stuck with you know a situation where uh, salaries are going down. There's oversupply of people in finance. Three kids, house, mortgage, cars, you know the whole thing. And so um, as I started to look for new roles, even though I think I would call myself you know. Um, you know, someone with aptitude and the ability to, to do the jobs, hiring managers wouldn't look at me if I didn't have certain uh, filters, so to speak. And so, you know, I looked at the you know the two most sought after highly paid uh, skill sets, and uh, one of them was having a coding background. Uh, and so, I, I used that sort of to kind of begin the transition away from finance, uh, which I think was a good decision so far. So um, these, these these computer camps. Um, have I've exploded, exploded over, over the last, last 10 years. years. And obviously, you've probably gone on job interviews and such. Um, do you think that these um, coding boot camp certificates are seen as, um, you know, good preparation for employers? Um, I, you know, I, I don't know if I can make you a, a blanket statement as yes or no. I think that there is a little bit of 
dilution in the certification world, um, this bolt-on education model. But I think that it's also brought people back into the job market that otherwise wouldn't have the skill sets and, and companies are obviously finding value in it. Um, I haven't yet experienced anyone saying that, oh, well, you know, it's just a certification and it's, you know, this or that. Um, you know, the company I'm working for has fully embraced it and they're, you know, bringing me up to speed. I'm working with people that have been in the business for, you know, 10 plus years. So my knowledge level is, you know, far below, but, you know, going up a learning curve. Um, but to straight up answer your question, the answer is kind of, you know, I don't know, but I see the, I see the issues that you're looking at. And so how do you think that having sort of the backing of, you know, uh, highly ranked state university helps, um, you know, on your resume as well. Cause there's a lot of these other ones that are like sort of just pure third parties, um, that are running this. How do you think having a certificate from UConn helps? I personally like it. Uh, I think that if I were, um, looking as a, a, as an employer to an employee, I think it would stand out. Um, I think that the execution of the program, UConn was definitely involved. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I personally prefer it. Obviously that's why I made my decision. I think that, you know, there might need to be some resolution in the future about how graduates should present it, so to speak that, um, you know, for instance, if you like, I have a project management certification, PMP, you know, three initials, people understand it, know it, it's, um, you know, fungible in the job market. What's fungible with the full stack engineering certification, UConn trilogy, it's, you know, uh, there needs to be maybe some boilerplate or some standardization. Sure. So, um, take us through the program. How long did it take from beginning to end? Um, did you find it hard to sort of juggle or how did you sort of juggle classes with your other commitments, having, you know, kids and um, right. other responsibilities? Yeah, that was tough. I think it was flexible enough so that you could, you know, jumping right into the, the conflict part. If you had a, a scheduling conflict, they gave you flexibility to um, be there. Yeah. Okay. The, the video stopped. They gave you flexibility to log in remotely, uh, I think up to four times, uh, and you could miss up to four classes uh, completely. Um, and obviously those would be emergency based and you'd want to be there because missing one of the classes was, was a lot. But the, the length was, I believe, t exactly half a year, 26 weeks. Um, so we started first week of August and ended last week of January. Uh, and it, it had a nice gradual progression from, you know, getting you warmed up to, okay, now you're in it. And it was challenging. There was new issues. There was new stuff, you know, pretty much every week. Uh, the instructor was top notch. I mean, I really think that that was a lot of it. Um, and we were lucky to have two really good, you know, three really good TAs uh, most of the time that were hands on and kind of engaged the class. I think that, um, you know, I was worried in the beginning because, you know, going to an adult education class or a professional education class, you have varying degrees and capabilities and abilities and, and uh, learning speeds. And so, you know, you just didn't want to be part of the problem or be brought into, you know, all right, why are we going so slow? Let's, you know, but I think that the instructor managed that quite well, to be quite honest. Um, and having UConn kind of come out in the beginning with, um, you know, people from stores and um, from the Stanford campus really validated it, to be honest. I mean, there were really, there was the fact that you, there were never issues with building maintenance, you know, getting in, getting out um, outside of the storms or, you know, uh, you know the, the weather mishaps. It was kind of a testament to how well it ran, I think. And so uh, what are some of the things that they had you do in terms of hands-on um, actual coding? Did you have a project that you had to work on? What were some of the things that um, they had you do during the curriculum? Yeah, so we had a lot of homework. We had, you know, I'll call it 20 homework assignments, and three of those were big projects that took about two to three weeks to get done. Um, 
and we worked in teams. We worked um, from the projects and we presented. And uh, outside of that, we had homeworks that were graded and due. And uh, there was rigorous grading. Like, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't pass fail. You, you know, some things I got a C minus on, I, I could, you know, bump that back up. But, you know, most of the time they gave you the, the rubric to get the A, basically. And so um, the company that you're working for now, was this the company that you got this job after you got your certificate or were you kind of already working there before? After I got the certificate. So um, how did um, UConn and Trilogy help in sort of that job um, process? I believe the uh, interest in, um, in engagement between myself and the company started from the uh, demo day, 100%. And uh, we met, I met, the representatives of the company, um, you know, among others in different companies and, and had a very intense conversation about, you know, how and why, and, you know, we were all presenting any project that we wanted to present, but it had to be one of the three projects. And um, they answered me some, you know, asked me some tough questions and, and then went on and I met other companies and then I, they reached out two, three weeks later. Okay. And so, I mean, how do you feel sort of, taking this career pivot, you worked in finance and you're doing some of this stuff, but how does it, how does it feel taking a career pivot? It never feels good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it was, it's tough. It's, you know, you're, you know, from a senior or mid-level manager, 45 years old to a junior and you know, that part you kind of get over, um, you just have to like it. And I personally do like coding. I like kind of the whole process of it. Um, and I'm fortunate to have great managers that, you know, are, are bringing me up to speed and, and teaching me and, you know, getting production out of me too. So, um, yeah, it's, it's transition is never easy. And I don't think you would be doing it if you were doing quite well in the career that you were doing, unless you were going to go change the world. Yeah. And for me, the decision process got to the indifference point where staying was about as bad as the transition outcome for the short term. So I decided to transition. And it seems like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like even though you sort of took all that time, um, you know, climbing the ranks, um, it seems like this career path is more fulfilling. Would you say so? Um, yeah, uh, more, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, oh, look, I like it. And I, and I liked finance when I was, when it was fun and it wasn't overregulated and there were things to do. Um, but I, you know, the, that, that industry changed. And I think, you know, the hardest, the hard decision on my side was to understand that, like to sit there and say, this isn't, this isn't a place where I, or an industry where I'd recommend my son go work. Why should I stay here? Um, I, I would call it, you know, something akin to, robots and, and auto manufacturing back in the late eighties, early nineties, you know, it's at some point you, you kind of have to move away from the industry you're in and, and be able to pivot. And I was fortunate to, to find this and, and to have sites like indeed and, and all these job sites where they told you like, this is what employers want. And once you know that you just need to go get that skill set, basically. Right. And um, last question. Um, if someone was sort of interested in, and sort of transitioning into coding, um, would you recommend this program to them? Oh yeah, absolutely. I would definitely recommend the program as long as they were well aware of the the expectations of the you know the work that you need to do. Because while we had all these homework assignments and projects, the getting up to speed part and learning outside of class, the class was I think ten hours a week. You had to spend fifteen to twenty hours a week learning and coding and doing the homework. Um, in order to be able to turn that homework in and get a, you know, a good grade. So as long as you know that going in and you like that solace of, you know, coding and, and being able to figure out the answer on your own and then having the luxury of an instructor or a TA at class to answer your questions that you couldn't have answered on your own, then yeah, I definitely recommend it. And I was, I was thoroughly impressed, as I said in the email, that, you know, between both the quality of the, um, delivered uh, product and the execution between UConn and Trilogy. I think it was, it was seamless and it was, it was unnoticeable that it was the first time that they had partnered together. Well, um, 
Thank you so much. Um, I don't want to take any more of your time. Um, I know you're busy, but thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for sharing your experience cool. um, with, uh, with the boot camp. Yeah. Uh, I think it'll be pretty helpful for, for people that are sort of either on the fence or, you know, are not sure whether to, you know, take the plunge. Well, I, I would just add to that point that in finance over the last three years up until when I registered for the, the boot camp. I probably went on about 200 interviews to find like the right role and had one job offer. And it, after the boot camp, I went on three interviews and had one job offer. And there's calls and emails every other week about, you know, new roles opening up. And you, you know, this gives you that skill set where you can you can engage and talk to potential employers.